The video that I've put together is all about two-way radios. Uh, I speak from experience. I had a two-way radio business for over 20 years. I personally have installed, I don't know, 500 radios. The reason it came up is I've got a CB radio in my car in New Zealand. In South Africa, I had a different radio. I've got a friend in Australia who has a different radio. So there's all these questions and two weeks ago when we were driving in the dunes somebody said to me what do I get? So I'm going to try and answer it and I'll give you some diagrams and see where I can help. I'm Greg van der Reis. I've been leading expeditions and driving 4x4s in Africa for almost 40 years. Join me as I explore my new home country of New Zealand. The first point I want to make is that you must get the radio that works for you. What I mean by that is that uh, if you're joining a club, the club will have a system they use. It's pointless getting something different when the club has a system. So you're going to buy whatever is used locally. So if you're in New Zealand, you're going to use probably CB radio, which is 470 megahertz on UHF. If you in America, you're going to use CB radio, which is an AM system. If you're going to, if you're in South Africa, you're probably going to use 29 megahertz. Uh, if you're in Australia, you'll use UHF CB as well as long distance HF radio. So there's no one system to fit all. They're all different. So what I'm going to try and explain is what the systems are, what you should buy, and how much money you should spend really. So the first question everyone asks is why can't I just buy a handheld? So this is a little handheld. I've got two of these. And every now and again they're specials. I pick them up for about $80 each. So they're quite cheap. But it's not the answer. They fine as an extra radio. It's fine if you want to communicate through an obstacle. It's fine if you want to give one to a friend who doesn't normally come with, but it's not the answer. Why do I say it's not the answer? A number of reasons. Number one, they've got to be charged. So driving along, you've got to plug into your cigarette lighter. It's a nuisance. Um, and they don't always charge properly overnight. So it's not the answer. It's fine for a one day trip, but not a long thing. Secondly, the signal that comes out of the antenna is electromagnetic. So when you push the button, it bounces around inside the car because the car is metal or the, the truck. And only the signal that goes through the windows is actually getting out. So with the vehicle mounted radio and a little bit of elevation, I'm getting anything from 5 to 25 kilometers if I'm high up. With the walkie-talkie, I might only get 200 meters, maybe 500 meters, maybe less. So it's not the answer for long distance. It's purely convoy, fun, give one to a friend, someone standing at an obstacle, giving you directions, that sort of thing. So walkie-talkies are not the answer, in my opinion. Um, everyone says, well, I can mount an external antenna. Yes, you can, but then you've got another wire running to the walkie-talkie. You've still got to charge it. And the radios are cheap enough. If you watch the, the local dealerships, I managed to pick up a 5 watt radio for my vehicle. Here, all the CBs are 5 watts. I picked up a radio that works really well for 100, I think it was $180. So it's not a lot of money. The walkie talkies are slightly cheaper, but they compromise. So buy a vehicle mounted radio. That's my first suggestion. The other thing is, if you buy, you can buy a cheap radio like I did. You can buy an expensive radio for almost $400. You can buy an ICOM or a GME. But if you keep in mind that all the radios put out 5 watts. So it's like buying a Ferrari. You can still only drive 60. If you buy a Mazda, you can drive 60. It's the equivalent in the radios. They're all putting out the same power. So you can't go faster than 60 in the, in the Ferrari. And you can't put out more power with the expensive radio. So buy the cheap radio. But, but, buy the most expensive antenna you can buy. 
the antenna is what's going to make the difference. Um, antennas have got a factor called gain, G-A-I-N. Gain is measured in decibels. And a lot of antennas are zero gain. So if you look at the little picture, um, when you push the button on the microphone, you're going to get a little donut of signal coming out of your antenna. If you've got no gain, it's a big round donut and a lot of signal goes into the sky. If your antenna has gain, it could have three decibels or more, but well, can have less. But on average, you're probably going to get three decibels, four and a half decibels, maybe six decibels. If you get three decibels, effectively, it makes the donut flatter. So the signal that went into the sky now goes more horizontal. So your range roughly doubles if you've got 3 dB or a little bit more. So buy a decent antenna. Another point is that your antenna has to be earthed. People say, I don't want to scratch my vehicle, so I'm going to mount it on a piece of plastic. or it's, It doesn't work. As I say, I've installed 500 odd radios. It's got to be earthed. So my personal solution is I put a body mount on my vehicle. I've got two. One is for my amateur radio or ham radio. The other one is for my CB radio. They're both on the body. They're both earthed. And I've checked the earth. If it's not earthed, it will work. Maybe for 100 meters or 200 meters. But it's very likely your transistors will blow. The radio is looking for an earth. The antenna has to be for the correct frequency. So if you've got a UHF CB on 470 megahertz, you can't use uh, a TV antenna. You can't use a ski boat antenna for a fish, uh, fishing radio. It has to be the right antenna for the right radio and the right frequency. To recap, you buy the cheap radio and you buy the most expensive antenna, your antenna must be earthed. You can mount it anywhere you want. You can mount it on the bull bar. The perfect space is in the middle of the roof. You want to get the radio. You want to get an expensive antenna. You want to mount it and fit it properly. Um, I've mounted my radios on the center console. I've mounted it upside down. The reason for that is the speakers on the bottom. But it still gets a little bit muffled. So I have mounted an external speaker. There's a socket in the back of the radio. And I've mounted a speaker where I can hear it better. So if my wife is sitting here and her leg is against the speaker, I won't, it'll, it'll be muffled. With the external speaker, it's fine. I put on a body mount antenna. I don't have a bull bar. And this works for me. It's really sturdy. It doesn't knock anything. And so I drilled a hole in the side panel. I then removed the rubber. This panel comes loose. Pulled the cable through and then fed the cable through under here. These just pull loose and they clip back. So the coax or the cable for the antenna runs out here under my seat and into the radio over here. So this is the connector we're going to be talking about in a minute. I was driving in the sand so it's a little bit dirty but you will notice these are the positive wires which go to my CB radio and they go to the other electrics. Both of them are fused. It is critical that your wires are fused. They must be fused at the battery because if anything happens the fuse must blow here. If they are not fused and something goes wrong in shorts this wire will start to glow and your car will probably burn out. So it's essential to put a fuse as close to the battery as possible. So I've got a wire running from the battery that then runs along the side here 
and it goes through that rubber grommet. Okay, so you're going to need a few tools, but before then, this was the fuse holder that I was showing you in the car. So you've got the socket, and then you've got a normal blade fuse. And I put all of these on every lead running to the battery. What's also important is the value of the fuse. This one is 25 amps. Uh, if I put in my long distance radio, it draws around about 20 amps. So this is 20 amps and the wire is thick enough to handle it. You can't put thin wire in. The, the higher the current or the higher the amps required, the thicker the wire. And that is quite important. What you're going to need to fit a connector onto your cable. So that's what the connector looks like when it's done. And they unscrew. So the collar unscrews. And then you can see what the connector looks like. Quite easy to work with. And I will put one on now and show you. So the tools you're going to need is side cutters. I use a modeling knife. You can use really nice side cutters to cut the braiding. This is the braiding or just a pair of scissors. You need solder and you're going to need either a normal soldering iron or a little blowtorch. I use a blowtorch, it's much quicker. Alright, so I've got a piece of cable and the antenna that you buy from will come with cable and generally it will come with a connector. Some of them are easy fit connectors. Just keep in mind your vehicle vibrates while you're driving. So after a lot of off-roading it will come loose. What I mean is by come loose on, on the back of the radio the connector is normally in and it's screwed tight. No matter how tight you screw it within time it will vibrate loose and you will get a little gap. Now this is the earth. This has to touch there otherwise your radio doesn't work well. So just check it. I often use vulcanizing tape and once I've tightened the connector I just put vulcanizing tape around and then it never comes loose. Alright so how do we put on the connector? I first remove the collar. You also get different quality connectors. Some work easier than others in terms of the thread. So if I look at the length of the cable, I need to strip it from approximately where the thread is. From there I want to strip it. And I need to solder the center, so I'm going to say it's about 2 centimeters long. I then take my modeling knife and while I'm bending the cable, I just gently cut it. You don't want to cut the braiding. I'll try and keep my hands out the way. Not of the blade because I don't cut myself, but that the camera can see what I'm doing. So now the insulation is loose. I then take side cutters. So there I've got the insulation. <coughs> this is the braiding. Now the braiding gets pulled back and put over the over the black insulation. I don't need the full length, so I normally go back about a centimeter or so and then cut off the braiding. So now I have approximately a centimeter of braiding. I then loosen this and I pull this back over the black insulation. Roll it a little bit and that's what it looks like. Next thing, I cut the insulation off here leaving about three millimeters or so so approximately there carefully just cut the outside with a knife 
<coughs> a little trick is you only pull it off for a short bit and then you can use it to twist and then it automatically twists the wire so now we're ready the next thing which is really important is the collar the collar must go on first there will be many a time where you will have everything soldered and they'll realize the collar is not on then you've got to redo it and start all over this is the earth and that is the part that transmits the signal to the antenna so these two must never touch so the best thing to do is just feel around and look afterwards to make sure none of the braiding touches the center connect this has got a thread on the inside I then push the connector on and I turn it until the center part of the co actual cable starts showing give it another turn or two and then it's ready to solder I've got my solder I normally just use one of these little clips and then it's ready to solder and these little blow torches Oh, uh, I think they reach 10,000 degrees, so they get quite warm. This is quite difficult doing it for the camera. So I'm going to warm up the point. It gets warm very quickly. And I just feed solder in. There we go. And you then take the collar, turn the collar back over the end of the connector, and there you go. Now there is a test that you can do to make sure that it is working. So if you look at the multimeter. I have the setting on continuity. If I touch the points, it must beep. That tells me there's a short. It tells me positive and negative or earth and live or the two different wires are touching, whatever you want to call them. So when I test my antenna or my connector, the outside, which is the earth, and the inner point there should be no continuity so if you look there there's nothing if I touch there it shorts so it tells me the connector is correct and there is no short on the connector the other piece of equipment this one's a little bit dusty is what is called the standing wave ratio meter if you get your radio installed by a company they will have a meter like this they can then plug in the antenna and check that it works and check that it's optimal for your frequency. Well I hope that gave you some insight into radios and how to fit them. I hope you have fun driving around and please leave a comment about what radio you use and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Have a good one. Bye bye.